Veronica Altenjes. She is from uh, Barcelona. She was awarded her PhD in the uh, Universitat Autonoma de Barcelona. And then as a Marie Curie fellow, she went to uh, Hanover. She was working there for a couple of years. And then back in uh, Catalonia, in ICREA, so it's the Institute for Research and Advanced Studies. But since 2010, she's working back at the Universitat Autonoma de Barcelona. And since one year, she's full professor there. And so Veronica was also a reviewer of the uh, Jakub Kopricinski. Most of you probably attended this event this morning. And uh, her topic is well, it's a variety of topics, but I would say that related to strongly correlated systems. Many papers about ultra code atoms in, in the optical lattices and also on a topology. So today's talk uh, will be mostly, I guess, about, about topology, but in this system. So, Veronica, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you very much for uh, yeah, sure. And I also would like to thank um, Jarek, Remik, and Taifun for the for the invitation uh, to to give this seminar. And as um, as you can see, the title of my talk is "Ultra Collatum Scaling Orbital Angular Momentum Engineering Topological Physics Analysis." But before starting with the presentation, I would like to introduce the team. Uh, so in, in the quantum and optimal optics group at the Universitat Autonoma de Barcelona, we are uh, four um, permanent well, four senior researchers. Uh, Alessio Celli and myself, we are permanent. And now uh, this year, Axel Perturio and Adam Mayes has incorporated a stereo. And Jolly Monpal was part of the group, but he is for uh, as a voluntary lead for three years. Right? Uh, then we have some PhD. But you are, of course, in Bayer right? Yes, in the okay. Goloma, yes, in Media And uh, we have also some uh, PhD students. The idea of the talk is the following. So the main idea is to show you that when we combine ultra atom scaling orbital angular momentum in lattices of cylindrical asymmetric potentials that on side by side, we can get complex capacities. This has been the main idea of the research that we have been developing during the last years, and we have recently published a perspective article, and I decided to choose just two topics on this research, uh, in this perspective article, to discuss with you today. Uh, the, this idea started with Juan Polo, that was PhD student in Barcelona, in the form of Barcelona under my supervision, and together with Jordi Monpart, and uh, then, after the main idea, the Gerard Pellegrini and Eulalia Nicolau, that we're also PhD students at our group, uh, we develop some uh, some works in a strong collaboration with Anselmo Market and Ricardo Diaz from the Quantum Transport Group at the University of Piave. And in some parts, we also uh, collaborated with Andrew Kaile, that at that time he was at the University of the Strathclyde, and now he is also. At. So let me just. Uh, if the outline of the talk, I will start with uh, an introduction where I will discuss two main topics, tunneling, and in particular, complex tunnelings with uh, the system that we want to study, and then uh, topology. These are the two key ingredients that we will combine. And then, as I said, I will discuss two examples, the diamond chain and the stable chain. And finally, I will. So, as you know, tunneling is one of the paradigms of quantum mechanics, and the, its control in the context of ultracoal atoms has devoted a lot of attention in present. Um, if we compute the tunneling amplitude uh, between two vibrational states of two harmonic tracks, we know that we have to compute this integral, uh, this overlap integral, and in one dimension, we will get a real quantum. Nevertheless, there have been experiments in which complex tunnelings have been achieved using different techniques. For instance, this Raman assisted tunneling, suitable forcing of the optical lattice, or also combining radio frequencies and Raman. These are uh, experiments that have shown you the possibility to get complex tunnelings, but we want to address it from a completely different perspective. We want to generate these complex tunnelings geometrically. 
by taking advantage of the azimuthal phase of the orbital angular momentum states of the atoms that will load in these uh, lattices of cylindrical and symmetric potentials. And the uh, cylindrical what, symmetric, yes. What, what is conflicts? You mean conflicts? Uh, the dynamic equivalence phase. Uh, but this will be important to get fluxes in the plaquettes to get the point. And the uh, potential, the cylindrical symmetric potential that we have chosen are ring potentials. Although most of the results that I will show are also valid for two dimensional harmonic potentials. Uh, there have been a lot of experiments demonstrating the possibility of trapped multiple atoms in ring potentials. I'm not going to enter into the details. Here there are a couple of reviews in which you can find all these uh, techniques magnetic trapping, uh, Lager Gauss, painting potential. There are the possibility in the, in the labs to trap atoms in ring potentials. And these ring potentials are the optimal trap potentials to uh, store orbital angular momentum states. If we have a single atom in a ring trap of radius r0 and frequency omega, we can just write down the time independence from the equation. And we know it is straightforward to realize that the, the solutions are also eigenstates of the uh, set component of the angular momentum that has this general form where we have a radial part. We also have an azimuthal part in which we introduce the winding number. This winding number takes values plus minus L, where this L is the orbital angular momentum quantum number. And we can also uh, have radial excitations. So in this work, we will consider um, that radial excitations are available. Once we have the atoms in the ring, we have to transfer this orbital angular momentum to the atoms. And this has also been experimentally achieved. So these are different techniques in which orbital angular momentum can be transferred to the atoms. For instance, using light beams, weak ring rotation, or temperature range. Once we have the atoms loaded with orbital angular momentum in a single ring, we are interested in knowing what happens with the tunnel ring. So we need to couple two rings, and we have different possibilities. So if we keep the cylindrical symmetry, for instance, uh, with configurations like this, concentric or in a stack, if we compute the tunneling, we will keep the tunneling real. But when, the, when we break the cylindrical symmetry and we have more than two traps, the tunnelings can become complex. And this is the, the, the case that we are going to start. Let me start from the beginning. So we consider just two rings close to each other. We label them with L and right, so L and, and R for left and right. And we define the cylindrical coordinates with respect to the center of each of the rings. We can just use the uh, eigenstate that we have seen in the previous slide, but just with a small change of notation. So we introduce the winding number that I have defined before, remember, uh, this is takes values plus minus L, where L is the orbital angular momentum quantum number. We we'll label also the ring that we are considering. We have the radial part. And in the azimuthal part, we introduce the azimuthal phase value. And this will be crucial in the form. Uh, before continuing computing the tunneling, let me just uh, check the energy spectrum. So we have these two uh, rings, and we load, remember, atoms with orbital angular momentum L, and the, the energy diagram will be formed, as you can see, by manifolds that are well separated in energy. So in each manifold, we will have the, the, the state in the, with the atom in the, at the right ring with minus L, at the right ring with plus L, and the same for the left, plus minus circulation in each of the rings, except for the L equal to zero that we have only two states. Since these manifolds are well separated in energy, the dynamics will be restricted to just one of the manifolds. Let's compute the tunnelings. In order to compute the tunnelings, uh, we have, can, uh, have a look at the symmetries. And just by having a look at the trapping potential, the ring, uh, the two rings, and the uh, and force of Hamiltonian, it is clear that this system is invariant under the mirror transformation. 
X and Y, uh, being just the reflection with respect to the corresponding axis. Okay. And this means, of course, that the, uh, the Hamilton commutes with this uh, to um, with the two symmetries. Then let me just consider an example. Let's consider a single atom in the left graph with orbital angular momentum one. Okay, and let's see how this state changes under the y mirror. So this point will be transformed to this point. So the, and then we will have that the circulation changes and we get um, that wire, the, the red wire at a certain place. The same happens for the X mirror symmetry. So this point will go to here. Then we have a change in the angle and also we have the change of the circulation. We can generalize this very easily and we can see how these symmetries act on the, a general state corresponding to one of the rings and plus minus circulation. Knowing how these symmetries work uh, or apply to the states and knowing the definition of the tunneling rates that we have to just compute this overlap integral, since the Hamiltonian is symmetric, we can just change uh, this order. Knowing that the, that the permitticity, we can get that in the system, there are only three independent couplings. And the three independent couplings are these ones. The first one corresponds to what we call the self coupling. This is the, the coupling within one ring of states with opposite circulation. This is possible due to the breaking of the cylindrical symmetry by the presence of the neighboring ring. And in this case, we have here, this phase that depends on the origin, the zimutal phase origin that we have chosen. Then we have a cross coupling that is the coupling between states in different rings, but with the same uh, winding number. And then we have the third one that is the cross coupling between different rings, but with the exchange of orbital angular momentum. And in this case, we also have a certain phase. Just in short, we will call the self coupling G1, the cross coupling without exchange of orbital angular momentum G2, and the cross coupling with exchange of orbital angular momentum G3. We can just have a look at how these couplings uh, depend on the distance. And as we see, the G3, the cross coupling with exchange of orbital angular momentum, is always uh, larger than the cross coupling without exchange of orbital angular momentum, but for the large systems, they, cons they coincide. They tend to the same value. And moreover, the self coupling is one order of magnitude smaller for all the distance. We have said that uh, in the couplings with exchange of orbital angular momentum, we acquire this uh, phase that depends on the origin of the single line. But of course, if we have just two rings, we can fix this origin along the line that unites the two rings, and this is it. All the couplings become real. So we need to add a third ring in order to take advantage of this uh, phase. And this is the situation. So let's consider now three rings in a triangular configuration. We consider that the left and the right are separated enough such so, so that they don't interact. And we can treat the system as two uh, as two systems of two rings. And in this case, we have the states left plus minus, central plus minus, and right plus minus, with the two signs of the circulation. Let's fix the origin of energy, uh, sorry, the origin of the phase along the line that unites the central and the left ring. Then all the couplings along this line will be real. But the couplings along this other line, the line that unites the central and the right ring, will acquire a certain phase. Because now this phi zero will coincide with this angle. Then we have the following situation. We will have that the couplings along this line will be all real, but the couplings along this other line will acquire a certain phase if we have exchange of orbital angular. Moreover, 
uh, we can calculate the self coupling of the central ring. And we realize that we have two contributions, the one of the left and the one of the right. And this leads to the fact that depending on the angle, this, uh, this uh, central angle, uh, we can just make it zero. Okay, we can just uh, have self coupling in the central ring equal to zero. And this will be the unit cell of one of the systems that we will discuss. So this was the introduction about the tunneling and how we can get these complex tunnelings. And now let me start uh, discussing some ideas about topology. As all of you know, topology is a mathematical discipline that studies the properties of uh, objects that can be transformed one into another by continuous deformation, stretching, or bending. There is a famous theorem, the Gauss Bonnet theorem, that relates the integral of a local quantity, the curvature, mm -hmm. in a surface to a global quantity that is the genus. The genus is a topological invariant. This means that it's a quantity that remains invariant under topological deformation. And typically in topology, the genus corresponds to the number of holes. This is the typical picture that one uh, uses when studies topology. Uh, we can characterize the objects with the with the genus, the number of holes, and in this sense, a donut and a cup of coffee are uh, objects that are equivalent because they have the same genus, they have the same number of uh, holes, and can be deformed one into the other, but they are topologically different to an egg, for instance, or has two holes. What is important is that from to go from one box to the other, we have to cross a singularity. And this introduces the concept of topological protection that will be uh, that is important uh, in the field that uh, that we study when we want to engineer topology to get states that are topologically protected. Nevertheless, uh, how affects topology to our systems? Topology also arises in quantum systems when we consider. Uh, continuous variation of the parameters of a Hamiltonian, then in, in parameter space. So let me just consider a Hamiltonian that depends on a set of parameters, and these parameters change on time. We can just write down uh, the, uh, the Schrodinger equation. Uh, we can introduce the eigenstate uh, n of r, and we perform temporal under conditions fulfilling the adiabatic theorem. This means that we consider that the eigenenergy of the eigenstate that I'm considering has, is wrong by a gap, and that the variation of the parameters is slow enough compared with the frequency associated to this energy. Then if we, um, in these uh, conditions, the time evolved state uh, remains an instantaneous eigenstate of the system, but it acquires a certain phase. The phase has two contributions. The dynamical phase, this is the usual phase that all the eigenstates acquire under temporal evolution. And then we have another contribution to the phase that is the contour integral of a quantity that is called the very connection. And what is important is that when this integral is in a closed loop in parameter space, this phi n becomes h in phi. And this is what is known as the geometrical or very phase. We, using the Stokes uh, theorem, we can just transform the contour integral to a surface integral. And if you remember the gauss bonnet theorem that I have shown you at the beginning, this has the same uh, form. So we have the very phase is an integral and surface integral of a certain quantity. And remember that the gauss bonnet theorem is also a surface integral of the curvature. So the, what is inside this integral, we call it very curvature by analogy. And then remember that what we have in the right-hand side of the gauss bonnet theorem is the genus that is a topological invariant. And in the same way, we can think of the very phase as a topological invariant. 
we are interested in periodic systems. And as all of you know, when we have a, a single particle in a periodic potential, uh, we can just use the Bloch's theorem that says that eigenstates are have this form. So it's a plane wave times a function that is periodic with the same periodicity as the potential, and the, the energy spectrum will uh, exhibit a band structure, and we restrict the values of the quasi-momentum in the uh, fertility. So we are going to deal with periodic systems, and in this sense, the very phase can be written in the following way. So it's the same, but now the parameter space that we consider are the quasi momenta. And we integrate uh, this, uh, the, the integration is in the band structure in the range of the perturbation. So we get that this very phase is a topological invariant and is associated to a band of the energy structure. Uh, in one dimension, this very phase is known as the SAC phase. And with in systems with inversion symmetry, this SAC phase takes just two values, this quantized 0 or pi, modulus 2 pi. If we have a band structure, we have to sum all the, the SAC phase corresponding to each band, till the ones that are occupied, to know to compute the total SAC. And what is very important, and we uh, we need to introduce, is the val boundary correspondence. This uh, val boundary correspondence tells us that if we have a periodic or infinite system and we compute the exact phase and we get a value of pi, this means that when we open the boundaries, we will get topologically protected features. Then, if we want to know if we have in our system topologically protected edge states, what we need to do is to compute the states. The most paradigmatic topological one dimensional system is the SSH model, that is just a one dimensional chain with alternating functions. If we compute the band structure for different values of the couplings, uh, we get this typical um, image. And uh, if we compute the phase, the exact phase, and we get phi, this depends on the ratio, on the, um, if the chain finishes with the weak or the, the strong coupling, we will have the topologically protected edge state that has an exponential decay and it has only contribution to one of the two sublattices due to the chiral symmetry that the system exhibits. And this edge state appears just at the middle of that. With this, I finish with the introduction. So now we have all the ingredients to, uh, to understand the, what I'm going to, to tell you about the diamond chain. So this is the first example. So we are going to consider uh, a single atom carrying orbital angular momentum, L equal to 1, loaded in this diamond chain. Excuse me. Yes. Question. Uh, sure. And what is what we mean by the topologically protected state? That means that if you have this pi, then there is a gap to the other to another state. No, that the protection comes from the symmetry. So, for instance, in the SSH, uh, yeah. we have this chiral symmetry, and this state is protected against the disorder that does not break the symmetry of the system. So if I add now this order to the system that keeps the chirality, this state will not be modified. So it is, is it stable against any small perturbation or only? Not any. Not so you cannot break the symmetry that you have. So, so it's protected if, by if one. If symmetry is same, then? If you break the symmetry, then I the, yeah. But if you are able to, so it is robust against that is ordered that keeps the symmetry that protects. Okay, okay so uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to load a single atom carrying orbital angular momentum L equal to one in a diamond chain. What is a diamond chain? The unit cell of this diamond chain is just the three ring configuration that I have shown you before. 
Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to fix one origin of the phase. Uh, in particular, I have chosen this direction. So then all the couplings along this direction will be real. But as we have discussed before, the couplings with exchange of orbital angular momentum along this other direction will acquire a certain phase. In particular, I will choose this angle as pi of t. And this will fix the phase that the tunneling gets. Okay. We can just write down the Hamiltonian, very easy for the single particle case. So we have the self-coupling. If you look at the expression of the self-coupling, uh, you will realize that has only two contributions that correspond to these two uh, sides, because I have told you before that the central side has two contributions to the self-coupling, and for certain angles, it cancels. This is uh, one example. For all the sites, the self-coupling cancels except for this one. Moreover, we have seen that G1 is one order of magnitude smaller than the other couplings, so then we can just uh, neglect G1. Then we have G2 and G3, the cross couplings, with, uh, without, and with exchange of orbital angular momentum, and with, without uh, exchange of orbital angular momentum, it is always real. But with exchange of orbital angular momentum, we have this pi phase that is acquired along this direction. Okay. We can compute the band diagram. And what we have are six energy bands. Remember that we have two states per side, the two circulations. Okay. And we plot it here for two different values of the distance between the rings. We have, in both cases, six energy bands that are the generated in phase. Uh, thus, we have always a flat band at zero energy. For low distances, two dispersive bands. But for large distances, when the two tunneling, G2 and G3, become equal, uh, the three bands, become, well, the six bands, in fact, uh, become flat. Okay. <laughs> What is also important is that uh, we have a gap, a bearing, that is a proportional to G2, the cross coupling without exchange of orbital angular momentum. We can also compute uh, the energy spectrum by exact diagonalization. And what we see is uh, the appearance of, of two families of interesting states. In the flat bands, uh, we have these flat band states that have no contribution to the central sites. Uh, later on, we will analyze the origin. And then we have also states inside the gap that are localized at one of the edge of the chain. And uh, they are topologically limited. Let's try to demonstrate that. Okay. Uh, in order to analyze the topology of the system, uh, and in fact, it's a common situation in, in the situation in the, in the cases that we study, we need to do a basis rotation to decouple the, the, the system, because we have these degeneracy. So what we do is we just compute uh, this basis rotation, and the system uh, becomes um, decoupled into two diamond chains, identical ones. And this explains the degeneracy of the original model. Okay? In, in addition, this uh, basis rotation allows us to get the phi flux that in the plaquettes. So now we have one of the couplings has a phi phase, or a minus sign. And this, when we do the ground trip around the plaquette, we get a phi flux. And this appearance of the uh, pi flux explains the opening of the gap in the system. We need to do a second basis rotation in order to get more insight into the topology. So I will not enter into the mathematical details. Okay, We perform a second basis rotation that allows us to map the system into an SSH model, slightly modified with some tangling states. So we have a one-dimensional chain with alternating couplings and some extra tangling states, and this isolated here. In order to make it easy, we consider the case in which the two couplings are equal, in which all the bands are flat, 
And in this case, one of the couplings become zero. Then we can just diagonalize this few of the states, and we get that these correspond to flat band states. This allows us to explain the presence of these uh, flat bands. And we, yes. Uh, sorry, maybe I'm just anticipating the, something that you follow. But this structure reminds me of the lead lattice, just one dimension, and lead lattice has a flat band, so it's still related. Is, well, we don't have not related it, but yeah, the, the evidence of the flat band is associated to the structure. Mm -hmm. But here, what we are interested in demonstrating the topologically nature of the edge states. Okay, and in order to do that, we have to, so this, the flat band states we get it by demonalizing these uh, fields. And then by having a look at this uh, duo, we get states that are living inside the gap. These are in gap states. But as we have seen, in order to demonstrate that they are topological, we need to compute the exact phase. But here we have a problem. In the original model, we cannot do it because we have the degeneracy, and then in, in the presence of the degeneracy, the topological invariants are not well defined. Then we have mapped to this system, but this has no inversion symmetry. Then the exact phase is also not well defined. So we need to do a third mapping. And in this third mapping, we obtain a diamond chain with alternating copies that has been studied previously, demonstrating that uh, exhibits uh, topological edge states. For the, uh, for the experts in the room, uh, just uh, two sentences. Um, in this particular case, this is a bit special because we have these topological uh, edge states persistent uh, for the entire uh, domain of G2 different from of G3, so we don't have topological transition. And also, another way to explain what we, the topology of the system is to, to uh, through the concept of the square root topological insulin. So our system is an example of a square root topological insulin. I have a question. Sure. By, by maneuvering, changing variables and so on, you finally discover that there is a way of looking at the system that exhibits this symmetry. Yes. Now, it means that if you go back, then also your initial configuration has some symmetry which is probably very hard to, to yes. notice, but is it possible to, to, to at the end to, to explain what is it? We, uh, we always do these mappings to get the final symmetry that allows us to explain, because in the original model, we have always the degeneracy. I understand, yeah. but if you just go back with the transformations. Uh, we have not been okay. able to, okay. we have not been able to. Do. Okay. Um, another important feature that this system has is uh, these flat bands. Why are useful these flat bands? These flat bands are, um, well, the, the states that live in these flat bands are the so called compact localized states. These are the states that have finite contributions so of uh, amplitude only on a certain uh, few sides of the lattice and zero in the rest. And this allows us to uh, have what is called as the Aranov bomb case. This is the, um, the localization of the, the atom in this case in a certain finite region of the lattice. Let me just show you with an example. This is our lattice, and we load our atom in one of the central sites. Then we let the system evolve, and it will be uh, tunneling to the neighboring sites and then back to the center. So it will not expand through the whole lattice, but it will remain localized in this finite field. Here we have the temporal evolution of the population uh, of the initial state and the total population in the sites that form the casing. In this case, these five sites. And you see that the population remains constant in this uh, in this certain region, we have demonstrated experimentally this aranopon casing in a system of coupled optical waveguides. There is this quantum optical analogy that 
uh, tells us that the um, a system of a single particle system, quantum system, uh, is completely analog to the optical, uh, the, the, the same structure, but uh, in optical wavelengths. So then we have just a building work in the group with collaboration with the group of Alex Smiles in Rostock and Georg von Feynman in uh, um, Kaiserslautern. We have um, reproduced this analog of gating with wavelengths. So they use this nanostrike system and we have designed and fabricate the structure. And then they have load, they have inject in this case light with orbital angular momentum. And this is the experimental result. Okay, so we have uh, that initially we send light. This is different snapshots at different distances, propagation distances along the wavelength. And we see that the light remains trapped in, the, in this final region. And these are the simulations with perfect cylindrical wavelengths and introducing some electricity to uh, be closer to the experiment conditions. Okay, so with this, I finish with the same with the first example, and now I move to the second example. In this case, we also consider uh, orbital angular momentum L equal to one, and uh, but uh, the geometry of the chain is just a standard chain, and we will consider also the effect of the interaction. We consider uh, a few atom case. Let me start from the from the from the structure, okay. So we, as I said, we load uh, orbital angular momentum L equal one. First, we consider single atom, okay, and uh, we are also going to consider the case for uh, of large distances in which the two couplings are equal. The Hamiltonian is also very simple. We have only the coupling term, and we fix the origin of the phase along this direction meaning that the couplings are real along this direction, but they will acquire certain phase related to this angle along this other direction, as you can see here. Okay. Then uh, here we will play another trick, and is to use the circulation as a synthetic dimension. So what we are going to do, so remember that in each uh, side we have two circulations, plus minus, we can just use it as a synthetic dimension, and then uh, the system can be mapped to a Troy ladder. So we have uh, this will be the the, um, the side P with uh, n atoms in this case, and plus circulation, the same side with minus circulation, and so on. Okay, for the moment we are with n equal to one. Okay, the one atom, and we have that the couplings along these the dashed lines. Uh, have a certain phase, and this phase depends on the sun. Okay. If we choose this angle equal to pi over 2, then uh, this so uh, perform a basis change. In this case, it's very simple. We consider a symmetric and anti-symmetric superposition, and we get two SSH completely decoupled. Completely decoupled. And uh, they are also in the demerized link. It means that one of the couplings are zero. Okay, so we have just a set of timers, and they are in opposite topological phases. If one is topological, the other is zero. We can compute the energy spectrum, and we get uh, completely localized uh, states, uh, edge states, and also flat bands. As we have seen before, when we have advanced, we have compact localized states, and we can also get atom of caging in the system. Okay, so this is uh, what we get for a single part. Let's see what happens when we add two and three positions, three or three or n. Okay, uh, now when we have more than one boson, we have with uh, repulsive interactions, compact repulsive interactions. We have to add the interaction Hamiltonian to the to the system, and uh, we have the usual uh, interaction, contact interaction terms plus the cross circulation. We can 
uh, we are going to restrict to the limit of large interactions. So this means that the interactions are much larger than the family, and we will take the system perturbative. Let's consider first the case n equal to one. Okay. In this case, we have two possibilities: what we call subspace A and uh, subspace B. In subspace A, we have the two atoms in the same side with the same circulation. And in subspace B, we have the two particles in the same side but with opposite circulation. We are going to focus on for this presentation to the first case. And what we can do is to perform perturbation theory. Okay, so then what we are going to have, let me go back, okay, so we will have processes of one of these particles can tunnel to the next uh, side and back. Uh, then this will lead to uh, on site interactions, uh, on site potential, sorry. And then we have also the tunneling of this state. So one, one particle can tunnel and the other can tunnel. So we can just perform all the combinations of second order perturbation theory to the, to the, to the case of two atoms. And what we get are this, this set of uh, parameters. Okay, so the new uh, tunneling amplitude that comes from second order perturbation processes. The, a new angle and also the on site uh, potentials at the edge and the bar. These are different because um, the number of magnetic states in the bar and it, at the edges are different. Okay? And when we uh, perform this perturbation theory, the system of two atoms also uh, looks like a Kreutz lab. We can do a similar thing with three atoms, but now the uh, coupling terms come from third order perturbation theory, but the on site potentials come from the, to the second order perturbation theory. Okay. Let me, uh, since we have the Kreutz ladder, we can do the same basic rotation and we also get uh, two SSH uh, in the liberalized state. Let's have a look at the at the spectrum. In the case of two atoms, what we have is the flat bands that we were expecting due to this uh, demerized limit, but and also some uh, in gap states. But these in gap states are not topologically proper. These are the so called time shocking states. These come from the fact that the potential, uh, so that this bulk edge potential mismatch. So they are induced by the interactions and the difference of this potential uh, outside potential. We can correct this bulk edge potential mismatch by in the original chain. And what we can uh, obtain is topological uh, edge states. Okay? Because when we correct this bulk edge potential mismatch, we recover the chiral symmetry and the, uh, the, the topologically protected states appear. In the case of three atoms, the situation is a bit different. In the case in which we don't correct the bulk edge potential mismatch, we have also um, these time chocolate states, these impurity states, but we also have these edge states. This is because uh, the, the order at which the onset potential appears is one order larger than the tunneling. So in this sense, the edges are decoupled from the bulk. In this case, when we correct, we have the, that the uh, time shocking states are absorbed by the flat bands. We keep the topological uh, three boson edge states, but we have some deviation due to port order perfection. Okay. In all these cases of two and three atoms, we have flat bands. This means that we have also are not concave. So the message is what we have here is just a stagger chain, and by modifying the angle of the stagger uh, chain, I can just choose to have uh, arno concaging for one atom, two atoms, three atoms, or as we'll see later, n atoms. So geometrically, I can change the conditions for which I have 
this uh, trapping of the uh, wave function in a certain final region. Okay, and this is the example for the case of the boxes. We have generalized this study for an arbitrary number of bosons. Okay, so we have uh, we consider n bosons and n particles with one circulation and n in the other circulation, and we create this effective Floyd's ladder by n order perturbation theory, and we compute which are the conditions to get an effective high flux to get these flat bands, and then we get an analytical expression for the uh, angles of the standard chain in order to get a random concaging for n. Typically, when we add interactions, uh, we destroy the random concaging. And this is an example of tuning uh, the geometry in order to keep the concaging, even in the presence of, um, of interactions. And the last uh, the last thing that I would like to comment is uh, that in this system we can also uh, control the, the spatial extension of the caging. So, and the idea is just to increase the periodicity. So we can just add extra sites along this direction. This will lead to the a non-uniform uh, pipe flux and. In the spectrum, this is translated into the appearance of more flat bands. This leads to more compact localized states and uh, more extension of the of the Aranobon case. So we can control, this is the case for four periodicity. So we can control the number of atoms that we store and the special extension of the caging, just simply changing the angle. And the periodicity of the And with this, I finish. I, as, just as a conclusion, I hope I have convinced you that ultracoal atoms carrying orbital angular momentum in lattices constitute a novel and powerful platform to explore the future. So, thank you very much. <laughs> so, thank you for the talk. And now the time for questions. There are some remarks to the talk. Well, well, there's well, actually I can start and uh, concerning the beginning. So when you were describing the model, when we have tunneling in this uh, three uh, three sites, uh, so the whole model is based on the fact that uh, that the space is restricted to a given. Uh, yeah. main principle number and uh, only n and minus n are allowed as uh, angular momentum quantum numbers but in reality if i would like to realize this scenario not for photons but for atoms shouldn't i keep in mind other states or no but these are not functions yeah but then the realization was for light yes yes and okay so maybe other way around uh, is there is it so easy to realize this model for atoms it's exactly the, they, they are the same model. They are completely identical. Because in the so maybe your point is that the optical effects are not fixed. So I would the, the difference, the other way, uh, yeah. I think it's easier to create initial state when I have well defined angular momentum for uh, light than with atoms. But with right light, or... with light, mm -hmm. you just have to put a face plate. And you create exactly. a yeah. rotating. And, and with atoms, uh, I have uh, shown you that there are different experimental realizations. So you can use light in order to impede to rotate or to rotate. Yes, mm -hmm. these are the list. So you can just Again, use light with imprinting. rotation. Sorry? Again, face imprinting. Yes. Yeah, you can. Yeah, with lasers, it could be more. Of course. Yes. There are different ways to do it. The most easy is the first one. Yeah, okay. And this, the wiggling rotations are the experiments of Bill Phillips, and so that they were just imprinting. Uh, yes, but then uh, this angular moment is like well defined. You are not ending up with the actual wave packet with different uh, end levels. So. Uh, no, because, well, experimentally, you mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean. Experimentally, uh, I think they, they can select. I don't know exactly. So, for instance, Phillips was able to 
to inject exactly five units of algorithm. But that would be quite unstable. Where what things happen there? <laughs> you know, yeah, he, can, he has like 100,000 atoms, not one. Well, no. mm -hmm. But I think it's quite controllable. Yeah. I think because in the the experiments that have been done up to now are with one, two rings. Mm -hmm. So I'm talking about lattices of rings. So it's a big, uh, it's yeah, it's quite far from the experimental. But in the experiments of uh, of Bill Phillips here with the with living rotation, they were just doing this uh, squids, no? So they they were uh, applying for a magnetometer, yeah. so they have have control on the on the orbital angular momentum. So, and once you are in, able to imprint a given L, then due to the um, to this that they are well separated in energy, you are you can if they are oh, they can they are, select them yes. Before. The dynamics is uh, restricted to one of the many things. Yeah, so I wanted to ask about the role of interaction here. Mm -hmm. Partially answer that uh, it may destroy actually many effects. How it's yeah, typically the interactions. Uh, so the topology, the, the classification of topological systems uh, in, in the absence of interaction is well understood. Mm -hmm. When you have interactions, then it's more difficult to characterize topologically the systems. One, uh, one possibility, if you are dealing with few atoms, is for instance with two atoms to map to two dimensions, and then, then you have the, the topological characterization of uh, the absence of interaction mm -hmm. um, by then playing the, so using the dimensionality. Okay. And then what we do, for instance, is to uh, use interactions in a clever way, take advantage of the interactions. Yeah, that's good. Okay, no, and, and also in the diamond, we have also you? done some things. So, for instance, um, I think I have some. Yes. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Here, in this case, for instance, this is the diamond. But now what we consider are two atoms, and we just tune the interactions in these sides with a certain value, and in the central sides with another value, and here another value. And then just by uh, by doing this uh, selection of the interactions, we can get a topological uh, protected states for the two atoms. Okay? And now we are introducing long-range interactions. So it is not, a, not completely explored. Uh, the role of the interactions, you have to uh, address each specific situation. So, yes. Okay, so there are questions. So, Veronica will stay here. We have some discussion with my group, but also everyone is invited. So, thanks again for the talk. Thank you.